Hey Rangers, today we're going to be talking about the top 10 what the what moments in Legends of Tomorrow and let's begin. Now first off, before I continue, a few things. I'm using a ring light properly, I've been using them weirdly for a while, um, so it's getting that time of year where it's quite dark, um, and also if it's really bright, it's the first time I've properly done this, and it's really kind of weird, of light hitting my face, so hopefully this is going to be okay, uh, uh, but because of this time of year, it, it's going to have to be like this for a while, not unless I'm up ridiculously early in the morning, but then enough of that, Let's start with the top 10. Number 10, a mysterious woman is walking in the lot and every single guy is looking at her. They're just either falling over, they're running into stuff, they're not paying attention. And she doesn't really know, she's just walking along. And we find out that later on, this is Helen of Troy and she is now being cast as a movie star and that's the main thing. But what I kind of really liked in this sort of time, because we're in 1937, when it goes to the title card, it's very much what it used to be back then. So it was, it's very grainy, it's very kind of, I, I would want to say kind of like Looney Tunes-ish to a way, um, which just kind of made me smile. Number nine is Ray turning around and saying that he's got nanites, he's been working on the problem to actually fix Firestorm, to separate Stein and Jefferson away so that uh, Jefferson can just become Firestorm and then Stein can go to his family and spend time there. What actually happens is something completely different and there's too much power going to it which then causes Jefferson and Stein to swap bodies and it's very weird because of the mannerisms that they both have and the actor who plays Jefferson nails it properly. He, to me, it felt like Stein was actually in his body. Um, when it came to the actor who played uh, Stein, he did do it quite well and it was kind of nice seeing him act differently rather than the whole I'm going to be a proper professor etc etc and that kind of to me made it really interesting. Number eight is everybody wanting uh, Helen of Troy because she is the most beautiful person in the world both KNG Pictures and Warner Brothers Studios they want her to act in their films. Now at this point they're all going to kind of war or getting ready for it because KNG Pictures uh, the producer or the, the ex executive producer turns up and steals Helen but not as in like kidnapping says hey come and work for us. When the legends actually start looking into it they find out that because of Helen being in that, lots of other actresses don't do really, really well. They're not cast, so it starts affecting the history and the timeline. And we've seen this previously when they started doing in like the previous season when George Lucas was kind of influenced or he didn't do films. We saw that had an effect on Ray and Nate, and the fact is that it had a ripple effect that could affect everything. Number seven is Damien Dark actually being there, and rather than fighting, he wants to talk. He wants to talk to Sarah and make a deal. He says that he doesn't really want to be there, he doesn't really want to start fighting, but obviously this anachronism is really good for business, and with this going on, um, Sarah's like, oh, I don't know, but he gives an ultimatum. He says, look, you can either go back to 2017, you can carry on your life as normal, or I will capture all of you, I will kill every single person in front of you, and then I will kill you at the end. At this point, Sarah starts kind of thinking about it, she reflects with the team, but at the end she turns around and says, no, I'm not gonna do that, no siree. Number six is the guys now fighting over Helen. We've seen previously in the episode where all the guys just start fighting over her because she is pretty and she's beautiful, she really want, like, they really want her to be with them. But when they all go up to Ray, they start talking and say, look, you know, you didn't answer your comms. Ray turns around and says, look, you know, I've not had my comms. You know, it's they're not working. And you kind of think maybe he turned it off, but he didn't. We find this out much later on in the episode. At this point, Mick throws a punch, but misses Ray and goes straight for the producer by accident, which then causes a fight um, over everyone. And it's just like, oh, okay, this this turned into a peaceful thing to like a kind of fight. Number five is a proper fight between KNG uh, Pictures as well as Warner Brothers Studios. Now the guy who runs Warner Brothers Studios actually turns up and starts fighting. They start shooting up places and they're really causing a massive stir, um, which again, you wouldn't kind of know, or I don't think that would happen back then, um, but it was just the way that they were fighting over And again, with the references of the story of Helen of Troy, it's like her face launched a thousand and ships or something like that which caused a massive war but everyone is fighting and Helen sees that Sarah and the other girls are warriors and this kind of links in a little bit near to the end which I'm really excited about but 
with that going, Sarah grabs uh, Helen and they leave and they kind of make a joke. Um, previously in the episode, the, the KNG producer uh, says, hey, you know, you know, she's now working for KNG. Um, but Sarah says, she's now a free agent, see? But in that sort of kind of tone of voice, which I thought was really cool. Number four is the Wave Rider not working whatsoever. And you kind of think, oh, okay, maybe this is a thing that Damien Dark has done. But no, we find out that because obviously certain actresses weren't actually hired to actually work, um, it's affected the technology. They mention that the fact is that without certain films, technology couldn't progress, that it wasn't influenced, um, like ideas weren't done. And this, to me, kind of goes like, oh, that kind of makes sense. But without that, certain things in the Wave Rider stop working. Gideon doesn't work. Um, the flight, the going back in time, they all don't work due to this one thing that's happening. And I have to admit, this is really, really cool. And as I said previously, it does remind me very much of when George Lucas wasn't actually a director. Thus, uh, the others weren't influenced by Star Wars and stuff like that, etc., etc. Number three is everybody is having a fight. We've got Sarah versus Damien as they start fighting. And then Damien's daughter, which again is like, Oh, that, that's a bit weird, but I, I can I can figure that one out. She starts fighting Mick, Ray, and Nate, and the way that she gains their powers when they start firing is kind of interesting, but you kind of think that if her hands were kind of tied, or kind of like busy, you'd be able to attack directly. We've then got Jefferson and Stein, they're about to fuse, which is one of my favorite moments. And then we have Amira fighting Kusa, I think uh, Kasuna, um, or Kusa, actually on the ship um, that she's gained access to as she turned water. And we find out that she is the grandmother of Amira, and that's kind of really interesting, but um, I'm hoping that might play out much later on in the episode. As Sarah is fighting and actually winning, she's about to kill Damien, but Damien's daughter comes in and actually, like, drains her of the power um, and actually almost kills her. And then we lead into my next point. Number two is the fused version of Jefferson and Stein. But rather than it being Jefferson as the main host, it's actually Stein. And he's turning around saying he doesn't know if he can do this. He doesn't know if he can use his powers to actually gain a lot. But I have to admit, he really pushes through and he actually becomes like the hero of the story. Um, and it's just really nice to see that the actor was actually in the suit rather than being the actor who plays Jefferson. But as we then we lead into it, um, they when they defuse or when they come apart, they're actually back in the right bodies, in the right minds, and they're actually being able to talk properly. And my number one what? would have been Stein, but no, oh my God. They actually linked Wonder Woman into the actual series and I've got to admit this is really really cool. Thus I hope I got her name right she is the newest member of the team and she has found a kind of loophole type hack in history where she takes Helen of Troy back in time and she reads through and actually says look I've read through this there's actually no mention of you in the you know the result of the war um, so you know it doesn't say you have to be there you just have to be in the right time and she takes her to Wonder Woman's Island, um, which I'm probably going to butcher the name. Can't even pronounce the name. It's like Themyscira. Um, I really, I'm sorry if I butcher that. I probably have, and I have, I have. Anyway, this is a huge major thing. And when I actually looked at it, I was like, I recognize that. I recognize that scenery. But when Thus actually starts talking and saying, actually, you know, this place is just for warrior women. You know, this is a no guys area. I was like, oh my God, they just linked Wonder Woman. Holy! I, I was shocked. I was like, well done, Legends. You have really, really got me on this one. Um, you've made th this entire episode was a bit, oh, okay, I, I'm enjoying it. But this just made me go, wow. Just, just wow. And I'm really excited because now I really love the fact that they're incorporating, even though we can't see certain elements of like Wonder Woman or Batman or you know anything like that we can see certain places we saw it previously in uh, Supergirl when they're like uh, when Superman comes in and the family goes oh we're gonna go back to Gotham I just really love this I, I thought this was awesome and it was a great easter egg it was a great nod and now I'm hoping that maybe we'll get a Wonder Woman series because I think that would be absolutely cool so rangers there's my top 10 what the what that oh this was a really good uh, episode of uh, legends um i kind of re i have recorded previous episodes um but i've not been able to get them out in time so i'm kind of trying to stick to two legends and supergirl i really wanted to do the flash as well um but when i watched the episode i know there was a load of stuff in there i just I didn't want to write about it. I don't know why. I was just like, no, I'm, I'm going to leave it. 
Um, so hopefully I'll start bringing this one in if these videos go out on time. Um, so that'll be in the future. But yeah, Rangers, what did you think about this episode? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did you love the fact that they put a Wonder Woman reference in? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you've liked this video, like, favorite, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the other videos on the channel. If you like this new setup with the ring light, let me know. Hopefully it's not in the glasses because I can't see on the little screen. Also, if you want to help out the channel on Patreon, link will be in the description down below. And as always, Rangers, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a bit.